I am I have, for, for, as a status report. I am halfway through a bottle of wine, so strong. We'll, we'll um, see how. We'll see how I'm we'll like go. a quarter way through this bottle of gin and tonic. So this bottle of gin and tonic. I've literally filled up a prep water bottle. <laughs> That is the most excellent yeah. thing. It's a prep bottle full of gin and tonic. It's uh, it's pretty delicious. It's, pre- it's pretty a uh, pretty basic bitch, mate. Yeah, I am a basic bitch, though. Hello, I'm Simon, and I'm Dan, and this is the Wikicast, the podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week, and we talk about what we find. Daniel, what are we talking about this week? This week, Simon, we are talking about. Lithuania at the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics. <laughs> and, uh, We're f***ing <laughs> back! We're here! Oh, this is, a solid entrance this into the canon. Is, this is how we do it. Oh, man, oh, what a... God. So, Lithuania at the 2010 Summer, Summer Youth, Youth Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. Why is that an article? I have, no, I have no idea, but... I'm sure as heck going to tell you some stuff. Well, before, we should probably explain our, our, our... I was about to say appearance, then I remembered it was a podcast. Ah, good one, um, yeah. We should probably explain our aud- audible um, appearance um, yeah. with uh, the fact that we made a promise last episode, uh, which was quite a while ago now. But we, we've been busy boys. It's last, last. last year, wasn't it? It was. I haven't, I haven't talked to you since last year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, friend. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, and basically last year, we said that uh, we would do an episode where we get hammered uh, and then record an episode uh, if mm. sorry if we um, if members of Morty. the um, sorry we, we gotta we gotta take down the Imperium Morty um, if people donated to the stream which I appeared on on the Yogscast Jingle Jam uh, which people did it was it brought me great pleasure to be live at like Yogscast HQ and to be like oh the Wikicast people are here um, and mm. people are like and they were like Somebody, I think the first one came in and said it was, you know, this is for the drunk wiki cast, Simon. And they were like, what's that? And I was like, well, let me tell you about my podcast. Um, so people donated to charity, which is very, very kind. And uh, to say thank you for that, we uh, have gotten quite drunk. Um, mm. uh, what's your what's your tipple of choice currently, Dan? Uh, I'm currently drinking quite strong gin and tonic out of a uh, Brett water bottle. Possibly the most basic bitch thing I've ever heard. He, you are Exeter personified right now. For I, I am the bit, most basic of bitches. <laughs> Whereas I am, I am drinking red wine. Uh, I have a Hardy's, uh, Hardy's Crest. Um, fun fact: uh, I, I, I bought this the other day, um, and uh, when, when purchasing this wine, I actually broke uh, one of the bottles of wine uh, in the shop in Tesco. Like I, I picked one up, tried to, uh, I'd knocked something on the floor by accident. Like I'd done those, uh, like a jerky thing that they have like on the side of aisles. And um, I just dropped the bottle of wine. Uh, and um, wow. uh, you, you were that guy. I was that guy. And they didn't make me pay for it. They, did, they didn't make me pay for the fact that I broke another bottle of wine, which was very Jesus. nice of them. Yeah. Um, but I've never done Good that on before. You, Tesco. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Tesco. Thank you, Tesco. Um, I'm sure they've got, they've got money to spare. Tesco, that every... Every little bit of the things help. What is it? Something like that. Something like that. So I am currently about eighty percent through a bottle, uh, a bottle of wine, and then after that, I have some special mead, courtesy mm. of hero of the Imperium um, and protectorate of the co- the podcast Dan Hanvey, um, Viking. Can podcast. confirm you haven't had any, have you? No, I have. I, I had some on the jingle. Oh, jam. you've opened it. Um, oh, so I, I know that it is it is divine, incredibly sweet. Uh, and, yeah. and lovely. It's like it's like a very sweet whiskey. I think was how you described it, which is bang yeah. on. It's uh, super tasty though. He uh, came he came down to to mine and we um we basically spent an evening. And by the time he got to mine in the evening, I think my housemate and I were through like a bottle of wine each. And then we had that, and then we went and got Chinese takeaway with from and we I introduced him to the funny clock. Oh, the clock! Oh, my favorite yeah. clock in the world. The best clock. Oh, the best the monster clock. Um, yeah. But um, for the re- like for the record, I, 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 this was a while ago now. But I remember being uh, um, Michael, our, our musical director, who lived at the at the cathedral, at his house, and um, I had two whole bottles of wine. And Pixel Girl was there at the time, and she just looked at me and was like, "Why are you absolutely fine? Like, yeah. how has this not had an effect on you?" Um, I feel like at the time, because it was the middle of the PhD, I was drinking quite a lot. Um, yeah. So this, because I haven't actually drunk that much 
all for, for, since basically Christmas, I, I've been quite quite good. I haven't been teetotal, but I, I haven't been drinking that much. So I imagine that once this hits me, uh, which it will probably, it might have already hit me. Uh, I'm not sure. Mm. We'll have a fun fun old time. Um, a gay old time. A gay gay old time. Well, tell me tell me Dan about Lithuania at the at the the esports twenty. It's the youth East what was it again? The 2010 Summer Youth Olympics. Summer Youth Olympics, 2010. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Right, okay. Lithuania participated in the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics in Singapore City, Singapore. 24 athletes, just in case you're wondering. 24 <laughs> athletes well, received... Is there, you know how like there's loads of Londons all over the world? Like, uh, Is there yeah. a Singapore City anywhere else? Probably. Hang on. Is there... Is, hang on, Singapore... For other users, see Singapore disambiguation. Um, there is right. So oh, lots of India. There are a few places called Singapore, mm. um, including a place in South Africa, and, and a ghost town, a town entirely populated by ghosts in Michigan. Wow, I, oh. I said that as a joke, but it turns out that there really are lots of places called Singapore or Singpur. Singpur, Punjab. Good job. Jo- Why are you um, saying that? Like um, uh, one of the things in Hearthstone is that, uh, oh god, what is it? The guy that goes job done. Oh yeah, um, zog zog and uh, stuff like that. Right? What is the, what it's is the, that? Um, it's a peon and uh, and like it's it's the oh god, this is World of Warcraft. Um, it's a basically like the lackeys, like the basic t plebs yeah. who carry wood chop wood move it from here to there um for the horde they're called uh peons and then in for the humans i think they're just called like slave or something i don't know but yeah they make that noise that's when you'd click on them they'd say job done or zog zog <laughs> um, okay I, I never knew that i've learned something already this podcast there you go and it and, and once again it has nothing to do with the Wikipedia article which i'm sorry <laughs> Okay, we're back. We we're back, everyone. Seven track and field athletes, four basketball players, three swimmers, two boxers. Right, right. Let, two... let me let me stop you right there. Okay, let okay. me stop you. Four basketball players from Lithuania went to the Summer Youth Olympics in 2010. Yeah, how many people are there on a basketball team? Because I'm guessing it's more than four. So, did they field a team of four people against like a full basketball team? Like, are they that good? They were that confident? They didn't even bother with the rest of the country. They were just like, or are there only four people in Lithuania under the age of 18 ba- who play basketball, basketball? Basketball at the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics has its own different set of rules. Are you kidding I'll, me? I'll briefly outline those rules now. Only half of the basketball court is used for each game. What? Each team consists of three players and a substitute. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> The team must attempt a shot for goal in 10 seconds. What the f*** is this game? This isn't basketball. What? Like, but what? Was this specific to the 2010? Did they just have some experimental rules in 2010? The ball must be taken out of the three-point line and touched by two teammates, ball receiver or dribbler, <laughs> and one other teammate before a shot can be attempted. The balls must be touched by two teammates, one of whom yeah. must be a dribbler. The dribbler yeah. must dribble on the ball. The, quiv- the dribbler takes the quaffle <laughs> and throws it to the, to the wide receiver. To the deep throater. It's quite simple, yeah. really. And remember, as, as, as our saviour Wickham taught us, um, <laughs> it's only gay... If the it's gay if the balls touch, it's only gay if and the it's, balls touch. Yeah, and it's not gay if you back in. <laughs> no, 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 no. It is gay if you back in. Oh, it is gay if you back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, what shit. kind of if you were being <laughs> f- in the arse, Dan? If you were being f- in the arse and you backed into it, would a straight man do that? I wouldn't. I don't think, unless I wanted to to convince. Uh, unless there were some external circumstances. I don't want to. Brought, there are probably lots of little footnotes to this statement. But if I, I don't feel like a straight person would back up if they were being f- in the ass. That is okay. That that that's my thesis. That's that's great. <laughs> so that's really, that's, <laughs> that's really good. So the twenty ten the twenty ten Youth Olympics in Singapore City, the one in Singapore. Yeah. Um, had its own weird set of basketball rules, so they only needed four yeah. people, one of whom was yeah. a dribbler. Yeah. Okay, at least one So person. four basketball players, so one of those basketball players would have been the sub, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Otherwise, the Lithuania doesn't, doesn't give a f about the rules. They're like, three people? We'll just bring four. Two boxers, or briefs, depending on your choice. Two, uh, two modern pentathlon athletes, two judo athletes, one gymnast, one rower, one canoer, and one sailor. And they all took part in the Battle Royale in Singapore yeah. City. Hello, sailor. Um, if, you, if, so, if there was a Battle Royale between all... like, it, it, Say it's like the Hunger Games. Yeah. And like all, the, there's one representative of every Olympic sport, like the best person in the world at that sport. Who do you think would win? Either the pentathlon athletes or the judo so okay can you explain your can you explain your diagram young man <laughs> the pentathlon athletes are going to have great stamina and foresight i think and hindsight probably and hindsight they've got great sight yeah 2020 2020 hindsight um, and foresight yeah the judo athletes <laughs> will will kill yeah, you're just like we got the all-rounders and then we got the f murderers <laughs> yeah well track and field basket the basketball players are going to be dead before the game begins Let's they'll be, be mistaken serious. for trees you know they'll like, accidentally the get best. hit by a bus on the way in or something and the three swimmers f it. i mean swimming only gets you so far <laughs> literally bear in mind down that one of the winners of the hunger games literally disguised himself as a rock like his skill set was cake decoration <laughs> before he went in yeah it's basically cake decorating and 2010 Summer Youth Olympic Basketball are the same. <laughs> um, but the, sw the swimmers can get... But, but you say that, but like swimmers swimmers have great endurance. They've got great musculature all round. They've got one of the best bodies of any like Olympic athlete. Yeah, but judo is just going to kick him in the head. But, what about some, but why, 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 why not something like taekwondo or boxing? Like What makes because you say they're judo? Not, they're not in the Summer Youth Olympics. Uh, I thought there were boxers. There were boxers no, or briefs. Uh, there was, there's, bo there's boxers, yeah, but not um, boxers. They don't have. They won't have their gloves. But the thing, I think like boxers are more like straight up killers than judo. Judo people just flip you over. They're like a robot in Robot Wars that only has a flipper. A boxer is like someone with a pickaxe in Robot Wars. They, they, mm. their only mode is aggression. They've just got to like whittle you down with relentless punches or the or sailor axes. and the canoe are also fucked. Great upper body strength, but yeah, one one sailor, one rower, one canoe. So maybe they'll all team up and make, <laughs> like a, make a super boat. The Aquatics um, Ultra Team. Yeah. The, I mean, like, from personal experience, the rower might win because they might just get their daddy to buy everybody off. Um, yeah. Like, you know, unless there's another... Is there, are there Were there any polo players, do you think? If there's a polo player, that, that person's won. They've got the most money. Yeah. Is there... A, sadly, no polo. I wonder, is, is, there a, is there like a distribution of which Olympian... I'm just Googling this. Which Olympic sport is richest? I just wonder. Because in my head, it's, um, it's, it's going to be polo. But I don't, I don't have any... Um, like oh, that. here's a kind of cool thing. Yeah. So the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics... I've heard of it. That was the first edition of the Youth Olympic Games. And th that's the Youth Olympic Games. Yog. Oh, my God! <laughs> Full fucking circle. The, the Yogs Games. Yeah. Wow. Youth Olympic... Yeah. Um, youth, the Youth Olympic Games. Wow. I've actually... Yeah. I, I, you know, I wasn't expecting this, but I, I have found um, an article where basically um, it's the five Olympic sports where being rich matters the most. And what the, what the, this is from the Atlantic, and they've done a thing where they look at the um, income effect of um, uh, different sports, and the high, the five highest sports are sailing, swimming, rowing. I was this is by the way going from five to one: sailing, swimming, rowing, judo, and cycling. Mm. So yeah. cyclists apparently have the biggest advantage for being richest. But, oh, I guess because they have to have money to buy the drugs, right? I suppose, so. and the bike. Like, yeah, you know, they, they, those things are not. If cheap. you have enough, if you have enough drugs, you don't need the bike. But... <laughs> you just, there's like, there's ten people in the Olympic final for for cycling, going around the velodrome. It's like the sprints, and there's nine people on bikes, and then there's Chris, who's just hyped up on drugs. Like, you would not believe how off his tits Chris is. And Chris is just going to run at like 50 kilometers per hour around mm. the velodrome, banking around the turns. Um, it's true. Yeah, imagine if you have enough drugs, you could probably run as fast as a bike. I have no idea if that's yeah. actually true. <laughs> well, that's another video, I think. But yeah, the, the, the Yog, Youth Olympic Games. Because, of course, Yog's mm. cast comes from Yoldi 
Goon Squad. Goon Squad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did I say, by the way, that I, I met Simon? I finally had a chat with Simon. Oh, no. Yeah, so, like... Um, uh, I, I've talked to Lewis a bunch um, and like we live streamed together twice actually and and I just had an email today we're going to try and organise something in um, February I um, I bumped into Simon on the street the day before I live streamed and literally he saw me and went mm. oh <laughs> like it was like because for context he was very ill he had like uh, he'd lost his voice completely and like he was feeling very poorly he saw me on the street and clearly went oh fuck a fan um, like, but then i chatted to him and he was super lovely and like i was just like thank you for everything and like for in my head he is one of the good guys on the internet like when i see him on my timeline it's either what what memery is this or how is simon demonstrating that he's a good man um mm. and i told him that and he was just like that's basically the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me so thank you um mm. but well except it didn't sound like that it was like that's basically the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me it was like it was like someone who's spent a, a decade non-stop shouting tried to whisper um it was it was quite something but yeah i feel like i've I, i've now met both simon and lewis and had a chat to them which is um Cracking. Kind of cool. Did you? How much of the Jingle Jam did you catch, by the way? I got bits and bobs. So I remember I managed to come home one day, and I had like a, I had like half an hour free, so I managed to catch the stream with you and Lewis, and I donated, and then oh, yeah, had to yeah, go yeah, off yeah. again to sing. Um, I, I saw bits. I, I, I finished watching the highlights reel of uh, poker, the poker final. Oh yeah. Um, where where Mr. Brindley himself uh, won, which is rather, rather marvelous. But I didn't really see a great deal of it. Like, there's just so much of it is the problem now. I think, like, back in the day when we started watching the Jingle Jam, it was, like, a couple of streams here and there. It was probably about 10 hours over all of December that you were like, mm. I'm going to catch up on that because it's going to be good. Whereas, like, now, God knows how many hours there are. It's probably, like, 40 or 50 hours of legitimately high-quality streams that I'd be interested in. And, like, I've only just about got on top of it. Having watched a lot of it live, like, I've watched a lot of the VODs and, and stuff like that. There's just... There's just so much. It's just become so big. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully I will add to that problem in future years. I, I hope that this is the year when I will be doing a, um, a whole bunch of stuff uh, with the Yogs. I'm, um, I'm, I'm really quite excited, actually. I, th I think there's a lot of stuff which we could do together, including I won't... Um, I don't know if I should spoil this for the podcast, but there's an idea I've had with Hat Films to do with crisps. I think I've mentioned this to you before, mm. uh, which I am super excited about because it's probably the most disgusting idea i've ever had mm. uh, but we'll leave it we'll leave it at that um that is exciting but um, yes okay so bring us back to the yog olympics then yog ventures if you will so i'm trying to get like a summary of of, of how lithuania actually did right and so they got four medals good it's more than i've got they had 24 competitors in 10 sports they got three gold medals and a bronze medal they got three gold medals. Like, there's no. Yeah. That's that's really good. They didn't come back to the uh, Youth Olympics until 2014, and then again in 2018. Wait, how frequently are the Youth Olympics held? Uh, Presumably, yeah, good point. It's every four years. Yeah, that's why they didn't come back. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh wow, they must have done something. They were like, you're not welcome to come back for four years until the next yeah. Olympics. <laughs> Again, brain isn't isn't firing on all cylinders. It's safe to say. Oh god! Um, in 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 2014, they did really very well. They got three gold medals, two silver medals, and two bronze medals. Well done, Lithuania. Last year, they had one of each. Wow. Okay, so that's quite a precipitous decline. Then. Yeah. They competed in athletics, gymnastics, uh, modern pentathlon, rowing, shooting, swimming, table tennis, and weightlifting, and references. <laughs> references is one of those, those sports that i've heard so much about but i know very little you know yeah um there is actually an article called sport in lithuania which is um i imagine incredibly general but it says um it says among the most popular sports in lithuania are basketball football athletics and cycling um i wow. i don't is that reflected in the in the medal hall from the 2010 youth olympics so I think basketball is like a massive thing for Lithuania anyway. Mm. Um, they came fifth. Um, however, in boxing, they came, they got the gold medals in boxing. Because presumably, basketball is always going to be won by America. Like, 
Yeah, and they won in rowing as well. They got a gold medal in rowing. Oh no, that's impressive because like, yeah. I I follow rowing a little bit, and like Lithuania is not a country that I would associate with rowing. Like the classic rowing countries are the UK, Australia, Netherlands, and America. Like those are the so, those are the big ones. It was interesting. Okay, so uh, in uh, in the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics, basketball specifically, um, the boys boxing. Uh, Serbia took gold, Croatia took silver, and Greece took bronze. Right. In the girls' boxing, China took gold, Australia took silver, and the US took bronze. China won a gold in boxing. That's just yeah. That isn't. I would not have expected that. Like without resorting to to national stereotypes, just that's that's not quite what I would have expected. Like China's medal hall to come from. Yeah. Wow. So, it was, hang on, where were Lithuania's medals won then? You see, in the twenty ten, you said rowing was they won. They won two in, uh, two in boxing, mm-hmm. lightweight and light light welterweight. Okay, so they got two golds there. They got a bronze in individual judo. Classic, one of the people that would win the Hunger Games. Yeah, they got a bronze in modern pentathlon. Uh, they got a gold in rowing. Yeah, I just. Uh... And that is. It's it. interesting that the basketball's come up because I think I actually know somebody from Lithuania. Um, there was a guy who I lived like he was. He lived across from me, across the quad from me in Oxford in first year, called Martinch. Um, and he was. I'm pretty. Sh- no, he was Latvian. He was Latvian. Never mind. <laughs> uh, someone's got to be. Yeah, someone's got to be. Um, I know a little bit about both countries, and I, I apparently didn't know enough to not mix them up. Um, yeah. Okay. I know not from nothing about Lithuania. No, Lithuania. The the capital of Lithuania is. Oh my god. It's not Vilnius because that's Estonia. Oh, is it Ljubljana? No idea. Hang on. Oh, sorry. I, I, you went. Oh my god. I assumed that meant that you were on the. Oh, uh... I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm now looking at the actual whole med- medal table. Oh no. So Vilnius I'll, I'll... is the capital of Lithuania. I got confused. What's the capital of uh. Estonia? Riga is the capital of Latvia. I know that one. I don't know about Estonia. Uh, Estonia capit cap capital cap capital Tallinn. Tallinn. Uh, yeah. yeah. I used to do those like sporkle challenges. Wasn't he one of the dwarves in the Hobbit? <laughs> yes. Thorin, Borin, and Tallinn, and yeah. Corin. Yeah. Who? Who? Did you see? He he went out for an audition. I don't. I I don't know if he's heard back, but he went for a big audition in London for like was it Rada? Or something? I think it was, wasn't it the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama? Yes, that was it. Yeah. But, um... It's good to... Nobody better deserving of getting it. He would... I, I mm. really hope he gets it. Um, also, shout out to Sam Sam Foster, whose birthday it was yesterday. Shout out to Sam. Oh, what a legend. Absolute lad. I, I love you, Sam, if you, if you listen to this podcast. Now, I found some exciting things here, Simon. Go on, go on. Uh, I found the official theme song... <laughs> of the of the 2010 Summer Youth Olympic, it's called Everyone. Okay, is the official theme song of the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics held in Singapore from the 15th to the 26th of August. So, so the song the, was sung. This specific version of the Youth Olympic Games had its own has theme its own song. song. Okay, I'm yeah. with you 100. <laughs> percent Yeah, um, it was local artist JJ Lin. From Singapore Wayne City, Singapore. Lim Jun Ji, better known as his stage name, JJ Lin, is a Singaporean singer, songwriter, record producer, and actor. Oh, he looks a bit like a knob. <laughs> um, in addition, guitars and cellos. Oh, the song was sung by five different artists, each representing his or her continent. So there had to someone, rep- there, was, there was an African singer, an American singer, an Asian singer. But there are seven continents, six of which are inhabited. But there's only five represented. Which continent's missing? Is it South America? Yeah. Ah, uh, classic. Um, so we had Jessica Malboy sang it for um, Oceana. Okay. Um, Steve Appleton did it. He's British, apparently, Steve uh, for Europe. Appleton. Tabitha, Tabitha Norza. Um, represented Asia. She was the second runner-up in 2000, 2009 season of Singapore Idol. <laughs> oh, um, wow. And Sh- and Sean Kingston is a US rapper and reggae fusion singer. Uh, he did America. Oh, Sean Kingston. Now, he is famous, though, isn't he? He did Beautiful Girls. Didn't he? Ah. Uh, 
I don't know. Oh, but it's your beautiful girls. Is that him? Yeah, apparently it is. I just googled it. Yes. Oh wow. Wow. It's, it's not his Fair real enough. name though. Do you want to get? Do you want to guess what his real name is? No. His real name is Kissian Anderson or Kishane. Oh. Kishon. Oh 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 dear. Um, it says on his Wikipedia, he's a Jamaican American um singer and rapper, best known for number one single "Beautiful Girls." On May. 29th 2011 Kingston was seriously injured along with a female passenger in a jet ski accident in Miami he was reported to be in critical condition but like that's the last we've heard of Sean Kingston aka Kishan Anderson but how so, so, so he did the Youth Olympic Games singing in 2010 and then he got in a jet ski accident and we haven't heard it from him since yeah oh my god what's happened what happened to Sean Kingston? Oh, God, this wine is definitely having an effect on me. Um, so... This is so weird. This whole thing is weird. Well, the, the Youth Olympics, the, the 2010 Yeah, Olympics. just everything. Everything's weird. So, everything is awesome. Everything's um, cool when you're part of a team, an Olympic team from China, Lithuania. China won. Of course. Russia came second. South Korea came third. Then the Ukraine, then mixed NOCs. Oh, non... National Link, National Olympic Committees. Yeah, so that, I think that basically means people who are from countries that aren't recognised by um, the yeah. Olympic Committee. So, like, North Korea is probably in there a lot. Cuba. Cuba came fifth. Australia came sixth. So, when did, where did America come? Thirteenth. So, maybe they don't put people into the, into the Youth Olympics. Maybe they just put them straight into the normal Olympics? Singapore came 62nd. Ooh, is that like with one Jesus. bronze medal or something? Yeah. Who came last? Uganda. <laughs> oh, no. Uganda got one bronze medal. What, in? I don't know. They got it in steeplechase. That, of all the events to get a medal in. The boys' 2,000 metre steeplechase. I mean, all I know about Uganda is where there was, um, I don't know if you knew him, actually. There was um, Ashley from Semitoned. Um, who who went to Exeter, who was um, of Ugandan descent. And I know the Book of Mormon is set in Uganda, and I know that it's a country where homosexuality is criminalised, and it's been... Uganda's got the weirdest flag ever. And it's ravaged by war, and I'm now Googling the flag of Uganda. It's like, oh, we like that German flag, but we'll do <laughs> we'll it better. Do it twice! Yeah, we'll do it twice with a little cartoon bird. Well, no, no, because it's the Belgian flag, but on its side, but twice, with a cartoon bird yeah. in the middle. Yeah, yeah, actually, you're right. Ha it's apparently a grey-crowned crane. Have we ever talked about, I mean, because we're both quite bevved, have we ever talked about the county flags of Liberia on the podcast? Yeah, I think we have, actually. Look at them when you're drunk. F*** it. County yeah. flags of Liberia. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. We, <laughs> that we could have designed better. Um... <laughs> we'll leave a link to this in the show notes my favourite one is um, Lofa County I'm so good at Lofa County yeah. or possibly I think River G County which is a, a all of them apart uh, I think they all yeah they all have the flag of Liberia in the corner apart from Cape Mount County Sorry, Grand Cape Mount County, which has it just away from the corner, and then it's got to be different. So within the f the flag within the flag, and then uh, River G County has three clip art trees and a a like filled in area in Microsoft Paint that is apparently meant to represent land, uh, a river which seemingly springs from one tree, and then a sunrise that's happening behind. But the other two trees aren't on the ground; they're hovering seemingly about 30 feet off the ground yeah it's it's a it's oh i love these things i i'm so i'm so happy they exist just nuts isn't it maryland county is another a favorite of mine yeah that's excellent we're like there's a clip art tree but they've added shade to just <laughs> <Yeah>. the leaves <laughs> And then there's a lighthouse with a bit missing. There's just no light. There's just there's a, there's a, it's it looks like a it's a metaphor a, tru a, metaphor. a truncated cone with a little hat and some light rays coming out of it. Um, That's quite the standard of the president of the Republic of Liberia. 
is quite funny too. Well, well, oh God, hang on. Standard of the President of Liberia. It's above, so above the county flag section. It's in between oh, the flag yeah, yeah. of Liberian customs. So this is yeah. a blue. It, it's navy, like like a light navy blue with four stars, one in the one in each corner, and uh, there's a seal in the middle. That, and around the seal, there's the text. Above it, it says, "The love of liberty brought us here," and below it, it says, "Republic of Liberia." Now, this definitely. And again, that's just more bloody clip art yeah there's a clip art cutty sark like a tea clipper and a palm tree and a, and a hoe and a, oh no i think it's a, a japan and a japanese sun yeah a japanese sun and a dove holding a piece of parchment and a a a plow like a hand plow um also the palm tree seems to be made of snake skin it's it's a it's a it's a mess it's it's an absolute mess that reminds me the love of liberty brought us here just reminds me of um muppet treasure island um mm. which is which is al- always what i like to be reminded of when i look at national flags absolutely um uh, right so <clears throat> youth youth olympics is it like is there anything else to be gleaned oh, i'm 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 happy to say no <laughs> What are you doing, by the way? Are you just murdering a small animal? I'm just... No, I'm just. I'm slowly sitting back. I'm reclining. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm. I've got my feet up on the other chair. I'm sitting. I'm sitting under the stairs at the desk. Yeah. Um. And I've just sat back in my chair. I've moved the microphone a little closer to me. And I've. I've. Uh, I've put my feet up on the other chair. Oh, this podcast was a mistake, Dan. This. This podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm settling in. Oh, sorry, was that the best cry ever? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. I love you, son. <laughs> What's that one? Yeah, yeah, that's that one. That's the best. That's the best yeah. cry ever. There's the auto tune version, which is just. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he just goes it's down by a semitone in the middle. Of, <laughs> in the middle of it. What a time to be alive. Oh lord, what a time to be alive! So, is that, there's nothing? Oh god, should we go through the tabs that I have open at the moment? I have Singapore disambiguation. Which Olympic sport is richest? Sport in Lithuania. Steve Appleton, Sean Kingston. Five things you didn't know about Sean Paul and flag of Liberia. Yeah. What's That's happened to like Sean Paul? What has happened to him though? I don't understand. Like don't the know. five things about Sean Paul is that he's a he's a strong swimmer. He um, went to Walmers Boys School uh, and planned to have a career in hospitality. He's he's of Sephardi Jewish Portuguese and Afro Caribbean descent. He got his beginnings as a dance hall musician, and his breakthrough came in 1998 with a cameo in the movie Belly. What's he done though mm-hmm. since he had that accident? That's what I want to know. Did he put a maggot hole in his belly? A maggot hole in his belly? Yeah, it's a Lord of the Rings thing, I think. Oh, is that uh, one of the orcs at the start of um, yeah. Two Towers? What about their linen? They're fresh. Yeah. Help me those. Maggot hole in your belly, yeah. So he's on Twitter and he's tweeting. So he's clearly got over that car accident. Wow. Is this Dutty Paul? Uh, no, that's Sean Kingston at Sean Kingston. Uh, He's followed by Barack Obama. The f- <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> right, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to put my foot down because this is just silly now. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Dan. This is the wrong it's podcast to try and like put order over. You know, I can't go on. Go on. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Once more. Your name is Dan Moore. It is. What? Hey, what's the next section of the podcast? Do we do? It's it's Dan's. Well, normally we go into like now. No, let's just like it's Dan's coral corner, coral piece of the week. Oh yeah. F- and this will be my piece of the week. Drum roll, please. <laughs> What is your choral piece of the week, Dan? Well, I'm so glad you've asked, Simon, because I've given this quite a lot of thought. <laughs> he says, going into what he last played on <laughs> iTunes. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Handel because I've got that for my um, my Genesis 16 audition. I didn't know you were going for Genesis 16. Oh, Simon, I'm going for Genesis 16. I didn't know that. 
that. Yeah, I'm going to audition and, and try and see what they say, um, which is quite exciting. Nice. Uh, Coral piece. Uh, oh, gosh. You know, what? I'm not sure. I, I can tell you, I, I have a piece that is not, I haven't listened to this week, but is like a new thing, which we'd never. Yeah, which, okay. Um, I can almost guarantee you'd never heard is uh, by Gregory Brown, and it's called The Missa Charles Darwin. So right. it's a piece that takes the form of the classic liturgical mass, as in it has a, yeah. a, a Kyrie, a Gloria, Credo, Sanctus, and Agnus Dei. But mm. um, the text comes from the On the Origin of Species by Darwin. So it's like it was designed um, to be a secular mass, like a scientific mass, if you like. And there's a recording on Spotify by the New York Polyphony. Um, <clears throat> and I think basically they chose the text and then they handed it over to Gregory Brown, who is a composer and brother of Dan Brown, uh, the, or- the author, who then mm. um, set it to music. And um, there's actually an album where they talk about that, that, like all the music is there, and then after each track, there's a commentary track of how like of the sort of interesting things about each movement. Um, no. And so, for example, there's like a bit. I think it's in the Credo where there's a bit talking about how natural life mimics the um, like mirrors the changes in an environment, and you wouldn't know it unless you look at the sheet music. But apparently, there is a section of the music where the music is mirrored about one of the notes. So you have like where one part, for example, goes up, a corresponding part. Say if say if it's the bass and tenor parts, the bass part goes down, the tenor part goes up. Um and apparently that was the most difficult thing this group had ever done. Like the New York polyphony, which does a lot of it's in the style of quite early polyphony, but apparently that was like the most difficult thing they've ever done. Um was trying to do this mirrored kind of harmony. Um, right, I'm going to play a bit of the Gloria. It's it's a bit weird. I'll give you that. Like it's it's it okay. takes it takes a bit to get your ear in. Let's have a listen. Oh, it's very um melancholy yes yeah it is it, it's it's quite early in how it sounds in both like how the harmony is constructed but also in the general tone it just kind of feels quite yeah quite melancholy yeah you're right god it's crunchy as fuck it is but it's hard to see yeah like the the, uh, the 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 album that they have with the kind of like groups commentary makes that quite clear that they they, they found this quite difficult and they've done the New York Polyphony is a, is a is a like the American King Singers, but they only do early-ish polyphony. Yeah. Um. So they they're, they're a group that knows their stuff, but there's a recording of them doing. I think it's bits from Mr. Papa Marcelli. Yes. Yeah. There's a whole in, there's a whole in, recording. Uh, and that look that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, very... I was singing that the other day. Oh really? It's one of my favourite masses. Yeah. It's very nice. It's in your book. It is. I have my chapel choir book. I have the Missa Papa Marcelli, the um, uh, the Vienne Mess Solennel, and I have. I think it's the Stopford Nunk. I was listening to the Vienne today. Actually, I was. I was. Sto- I was imagining in my head the sitcom I have about um, a, a chapel choir and how the mm. Vienne would open. The Gloria would open season two, and then that yeah. would give you clues to the plot line of all of season two. Um, I just um, I just remembered actually uh, good, I've got a good thing for my choral corner mm-hmm. well just as a passing comment on, on choral stuff um, I sang uh, I sang on Sunday as as I tend to do um, and uh, we had quite quite possibly the most spectacular day of music it was the long lay oh yeah, um, yeah. mass in the morning followed by um, Hal St Paul's at Evensong Ooh. It was just epic. Like no one had a voice by the end of that service. I've just got to remind myself how the long lay goes. Uh, it's the uh, um, it's Tintera Park Song. That's the one where the Agnus Dei is double choir, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agnus Dei, Quitodis Peccata Mundi. Oh no, you're thinking of that's the Frank Martin. Oh, that's the Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Um, the long lay Agnus is um. More forgettable than the Gloria. Hang on, long lay bold claim. Long but... lay Gloria. Hang on, I'll know it when I hear it. It's the mess solenel, right? 
Yeah. Hang on, I'll just listen to the, the start of the, the long way. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Uh, it's on me. Yes, okay. Wow, th- if that's you a wait, big If you scene. wait until... Um, listen until so each part comes in. Yeah. So you've got the basses start, then tenors, then the altos, then the sopranos. After the sopranos finish their bit, the organ get like lays down this massively fat chord, and it's epic because it is just terrifying. <laughs> it's such a scary mass. Um, yeah. Well, because um, Lo- when did Longley write it? Was it was it post World War Two or post World War One? I? I don't know. Um, Jean Longley. Yeah, he was born in 1907. Oh my God. Google a picture of, of Jean Longley. He looks like Doctor Strangelove. Holy f- <laughs> what the f- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's like a. Fat... He looks like a Nazi he's, scientist. Uh, yeah, he he yeah. And now we are going to do some experiments on. <laughs> was he blind or something? Why was he always wearing so? Oh, he was blind. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> 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 oh no! He was blind. Oh no! That is pretty funny. He he went blind due to glaucoma when he was two, but he became an amazing composer despite being blind. That is impressive. Oh god, I feel awful. Dan. Yeah, you should. Oh wow, he was organist. He was like head organist at the Basilica of Saint Clotilde in Paris, which is an amazing looking building. Oh, wow, yeah. Nice, like a small Notre Dame. Yeah. He, he does, okay, I don't change my characterization of Jean Longley as looking like a Nazi scientist, though, because he totally does. So is your piece, of the, is your choral piece of the week his Mess Solennel? Mm. Okay, that's that, that, done. Yeah, why not? Right, we should, Bosh. We should probably move on. <laughs> So, Dan, I have two things that I would like to offer critique of in okay. in, Christ, in in Critics Corner. I'm forgetting the order of the corners. Um, what, what, do, you, do you have anything you'd like to bring up? I'm just trying to think. Um, I finished watching... Uh... Oh, Sunday! <laughs> Very nice. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny that that's where we went. (laughs) Straight into Path of Miracles. Any glissando becomes the Path of Miracles. That's just the way it is. Yeah, that is pretty funny. I'll have to put a link um, in the show notes to the the first movement of the Path of Miracles, and that makes no sense. (laughs) Watership Down. The BBC Watership Down. Now, this has your favourite person on the planet, apart from Dodie, uh, Dodie Clark, which is... Um, Daisy Ridley in it yes now so so what's your what's your review because I didn't watch this so I have no idea I thought it was I thought it was alright mm-hmm. I wouldn't go mad about it it's not nearly as good as the um, the Ridgy Didge animation <laughs> the Ridgy um, Didge animation <laughs> yeah <laughs> love it the uh, the Ridgy the Ridgy Didge um, but it was alright I thought it was okay uh, I didn't really buy into the art style I think it was a bit jarring at times it was an interesting interpretation of the story and I think yeah it was okay did you watch anything else over Christmas? not really I didn't really have time I suppose um, you were singing a great deal yeah yeah uh, that was basically all I did I ended up going home for a, a little bit like four days I think over New Year and then came back uh, I have been watching the BBC's adaptation of Les Mis Oh, now that this this famously is not a musical adaptation, right? Yeah, it's the it's an adaptation of Victor Hugo's book, right? And what, what what's your take on it? I really like it. I think it's excellent. Now, do you like it more because it's not a musical adaptation? Yeah, probably. Okay, because it's just it's so dark. It's really dark. Um, it's it's. I think it's really cool. There's 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 lots. Like I think I know the name is story quite well, but I I think oh well actually no I know the musical version. Yeah yeah. Presumably um, there's whole it, sections that you it leaves out a lot you don't hear about and yeah yeah. Um, it's really cool and the casting's incredible. Um, because well, is it well is worth it a watch. Dom- who's the, who's Jean Valjean? Is it Dominic? Um, Dominic West. Dominic West. The, who are fam- made famous by um three hundred right. Uh yeah. Yeah, he's he's the traitorous guy in Sparta in Three Hundred. Yeah, he's a very very good actor. No, yeah, yeah, he's just got one of those faces that's just like it's not a Jim Carrey rubber face, but it's just like it's just very emotive. 
you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um okay well so so i have i have two things which i'd like to critique because i didn't watch very much over over christmas at all actually um actually okay. no, i tell a lie i have three things um the first thing i'd like to review is um mary poppins returns okay now from the sounds of things you haven't seen this i have not seen it um i went into it with quite low expectations i have to say yeah um and much like tonight i went into it rather bevved because pixel girl and i decided we go and see her after we'd had a date night where we went to zz's got a bottle of wine and we're like do you want to see a movie um mm. and then we went to see mary poppins and i am so happy to report that it is absolutely delightful it oh. it is i went in and i was like this isn't gonna be great it's gonna be okay and it was it was lovely it was it was charming it was absolutely everything a mary poppins a disney mary poppins movie should be um as far as i can tell and i i will absolutely put a caveat on this that i haven't read the books about the mary poppins books as far as I can tell, it is a closer adaptation of the character of Mary Poppins than the original was. Mm. Um, as in, in this film, it kind of feels like it's talking to children who have grown up. Possibly children of the same age who were like, you know, compared to um, when the first one came out. But children who are aware of adult problems. So the mm-hmm. main thrust of the whole story is that the Banks family home is going to be repossessed because they can't pay back a loan. Um, yeah. And it doesn't talk that down to the children. It's like, that's the reality. Like, we're going to have to move out and live somewhere else. Um, mm. And I don't know, it just generally, it, it just kind of, it peels back the classic Disney facade of everything being tip top and spit spot and yeah, and hunky dory. Mm. Um, and it treats the children like adults, um, in quite a few ways actually. And uh, like much as the music isn't as immediately, they have the, the, the film that the film songs haven't become immediate classics, um, Mm -hmm. in the same way that the originals did. Um, I, I just loved it. I, I I thought the whole thing was delightful. In the incidental music, there's a lot of musical cues that take inspiration from songs from the original movie. So there's like yeah. you you get bits of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious that come in every now and again, for example. Yeah. Um. And Emily Blunt is amazing as Mary Poppins, and Lin Manuel Miranda is as usual fantastic. Um. Mm. I I'd, I'd highly recommend it. It's it's a lovely charming feel-good film actually and i feel in Mm. many ways actually a better film than the original mary poppins i feel like it's got a better story i feel like it is better acted um i feel like it is more cohesive um in terms of like the message it's trying to send to children um yeah like yeah i i was really quite pleasantly surprised i've got to say that's really i'm really glad to hear that you should see it i i feel like you'd probably come out and be like Ah, oh, like that. That oh, ah, yeah. that was nice. Um, it's... Well, I need to go and see something again with James, my housemate, because the last thing we saw was um, Crimes of Gellert Grindelwald and um, Oh, Crimes that. of Filmmaking. Yeah, just yeah. See this; it will cleanse the palate. It will cleanse the. Palate. Okay, that's good. I also really want to see um, the favorite. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd... it's meant to be very good with Olivia Coleman. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Basically, anything Olivia Coleman is as gold is in is gold. So yes, I'd be I'd I'd like to see that too. That was the other thing that was on my radar. Um, the the other media thing which I'd like to review is um, mm-hmm. Anne. I've got to get the the actual name right here because like I can give you a, a kind of approximate description, but I want to get the exact name right. Um, yeah. So the uh, Pixel Girl and I have been watching a netflix series called tidying up with marie kondo now have you heard of Mm -hmm. this yes i have yeah and i've watched i've watched the first episode ah okay right so we can now have a comparison what did you think um there's something endearing about her yep i think i would definitely be the kind of person who buys into the spiritual side of her method of cleaning Mm mm-hmm but I can't get over the fact that it's one of the, it's done in an annoying American reality way. Oh, yeah. It's like they go into the bedroom and it's like, you haven't even made the bed. You obviously did make the bed, but they told you to unmake it for the purposes of the, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. 
I also think that not a lot of it, other than kind of like um, her 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 kind of um, methodology of packing drawers and things, is quite clever to optimize space and stuff. You know. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah that's all right. I mean, what about you? Well, so basically. Pixel Girl showed me the first episode and I was like, oh God, I've got to watch this thing on Netflix because pretty much as a rule, anything that she likes, I don't like Mm -hmm. when it comes to watching stuff. Like on YouTube, I think the only channels that we will watch together are Marquez Brownlee and Casey Neistat. Like that's it. Those are the only Mm -hmm. things that we will enjoy together. So as soon Mm -hmm. as she suggested the thing on Netflix, I was very hesitant. I watched the first episode and I was like, "Eh, I quite enjoyed it by the end. Like it was quite satisfying to watch these places. For those who don't know, the the Netflix show is people invite this tiny Japanese lady who's like 30 or so, like quite a young Japanese lady into their homes. She shows them how to tidy up. She goes away. Six weeks later, she comes back and their lives have been transformed by how tidy their house is. That's that's basically every episode. Yeah. And um, I saw the first one and I was like, eh, whatever. And then Pixel Girl went away and she tidied her clothes. So Pixel Girl's drawer now, like she has two drawers in our chest of drawers. She has like a regular clothes drawer and a kind of sports clothes drawer. And um, they're now tidied in the condo way where like you fold the clothes into thirds and then they stand up on their end and you can see what you have in um, your drawer rather than it all being a mess. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I then watched a couple more episodes and got kind of completely addicted to the show. Um, So now both of us have gone through our drawers and we throw away about four bin liners worth of clothes. Like we, we, well, sorry, I should say we should donate it to charity. We donated to the British Heart Foundation. Yes. Um, about four bin liners worth of clothes. And I now have two drawers which are neatly stacked. And um, we've got rid of a lot of the clutter and they're all, I can find everything that I, I want. And we did the same for the kitchen based on this program. And I've got to say, this house feels a lot more livable having mimicked what is shown in tidying up with Marie Kondo. Yeah. Like I, I, I was very dismissive at first, but I gave it a go and I have I've got to say the Pixel Girl was absolutely right to get me on it because it has made a real difference to I don't know, it's just hard to describe. Like you open up your drawers in the morning and like I can see what t shirts I own. Like mm-hmm. it just, I just feel it it's almost like a little layer of stress has been reduced. Um so I would highly recommend the show and giving it a go of readers at home. Um, yeah, it's quite an endearing watch. It is. She's got, she's just like, she's got quite a force of personality about her. Like mm-hmm. she herself is this this very petite Japanese lady with an impeccable sense of style, just like a jumper mm. and, a, and a skirt and every episode. But somehow you're like, oh, that's a nice combo every episode. Mm. And like, I don't know, she's just quite disarming with how like, how simple her approach is um mm. and yeah i'd highly i'd highly recommend it i would I, 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 if i was being a critic i would say thumbs up you should you should give it a go and then lastly i realize i've been talking for a little while um i got a new phone dan oh yeah i've heard about this yeah i got a pixel 3 um right so what's that simon basically the premier android phone that's not a phablet like that's not halfway between a phone and a tablet and i've got to yeah. say it is incredible i mm. absolutely love this phone mm-hmm. like pretty much anything you could ask of when it comes to a phone it does it and it does it really really well like i, I like if i was to pick one thing about this phone that i like the most it is the camera which i know that you love on your phone yes yeah because you've got the t- the 10 right yeah you have the iphone 10 I have yeah. the iPhone 10. So I feel like this is basically... <clears throat> the Pixel is basically the iPhone... The Android version of the iPhone when it comes to cameras. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's just really good. I'd, I'd heartily recommend it. It's very smart. I have yet to have a single instance of lag. It has done everything my old phone did. Sorry, everything is done... It Wow, red wine. It has done on. everything my old phone did, but better. Um... Yeah, big, big fan. I'd be interested to know if anyone in the readership has a Pixel, if they would like to contradict my opinion, because it is, of course, correct. 
Um, but if you would like to offer an incorrect opinion, do please email in at spongeelectrica.gmail.com. Um, are you still happy? Because how long have you had your phone for now? I got my 10 uh, about a month before I left Apple, so... How convenient. Yeah. Some might well, say. This is, why, this, is, this is how it cost me, like, nothing, because I saved up all of the money I could spend on my and all my discounts. So I, my phone, this phone, plus the case, which was a leather Apple case, should have the whole thing come to about a silly amount of money that I don't want to say, because it is just <laughs> silly. Um, but I think I ended up paying about £200. Wow. Um, yeah, which is pretty extraordinary. So I, I used my, like staff discount i use the money that i when you've been working there for a bit you get to spend a certain amount of money in the store um uh, or put it towards something i used that and then i traded in my old iphone 7 which was in really good nick so that was i got that like 100 and something for that so mm. but yeah i like i mean i'm i'm i still absolutely adore this phone um it's lovely i'm i'm complete i'm never going back to a phone with a like a home button it's so unnecessary um gesture gesture based navigation is the future I mean, I, I was about to contradict you, but then I noticed that my phone doesn't have a home button. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I guess... You don't realise, though, do you? You, don't, you? you suddenly just... You're like, yeah, you don't... But I don't think this has gesture navigation. Is it, when you say gestures, you mean, like, your fingers are not touching the screen. Oh, no, I, I, mean, I mean, like, so to, to, to get into the phone or, and to go, or, like, to go back to a home screen, you swipe up from the bottom. It's that gesture rather than actual, like, a tap tick something. Oh, I see, know. right. Yeah, because I've got a... I have a fingerprint scanner on the back rather than Face ID, mm. for example. But, yeah, ah, like, I don't have a, um, <clears throat> a home button. Um, it, this, this, incidentally, didn't cost me anything up front, which was ridiculous to me that I could just, like, go from a contract that, like, cost more for a sh- a phone and suddenly mm. everything in my life is just better and cheaper mm-hmm. I, I, I don't I, I don't understand how that can be a thing i guess that's just what happens when you have a two-year contract like what a yeah <clears throat> yeah wow i seem to be losing my voice already um if do you have anything else that you'd like to critique i don't really i've been so i haven't really done much in the way of media over christmas and new year because i've been so busy I, and i haven't other than lame i haven't done anything because again term has started and it's chocker. Actually, I tell you what, I want to hear a critique of something, which we talked about very okay. briefly before we started recording. What is your critique of the um, screenwriting stuff that you've done as part of your degree? Oh, yeah. I, I want to hear about this. Yeah. It's really cool. So I had my first uh, two hour seminar on Monday. Um, I have another uh, seminar tomorrow. It's really interesting. So we were talking, uh, that seminar was about the importance of um, Being willpower and desire. Um, so desire is the engine of plot. It's one of the things we took away from from this uh, um, this class. So for next week, I've got to put a, to put together a piece of a piece of writing. Um, he's a really interesting lecturer. This guy is called Sam North. The the kind of the textbook that I'm working from, he wrote, which is quite cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, it's um, it's a super interesting class, and I think the biggest thing for me is that it's just it's. I get to do something creative because I'm 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 getting sick and tired of class. <laughs> um, like, oh, like you would not believe. So what? what... I said, well, that's that's a lie. There there are elements of my classic side that are actually really interesting, and there's some elements that I find um, loathsome in the extreme. So what what, um, what what do your assignments look like in um, in, in screen? So there's usually there's usually a, there's there's like a weekly piece of writing we have to prepare for the following week. Right. So in this case, it was um, we each had to write down a thing that we wanted that we could like go out and get one way or another. It had to be like a fit. It couldn't be like success or something. You know, it had to be kind of like a tangible thing. And then we also then we had to write down a brief description of a person that we may know um, or we've encountered in life. And then he gathered. They were all gathered up and dispersed randomly. So you had a random. Th- a random thing that you want and a random person. And then I've got to prepare a piece of writing about that person getting this thing. Um, and that's then going to be shared next week and we're going to talk about it. It's kind of like successes and failures. Um, so it's a creative writing thing, but with a specific format, basically. Yeah, so it not, I'm not, it's, and it doesn't have to be, not because it's this early, it's not, ex, it's not like explicitly um, within the kind of the style of a screenplay you know it could just be it's like mine will be a piece of prose um a bit of creative writing um but we watched some really cool 
uh, short films, actually. Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember what on earth they were called, though. Short films are their own weird kind of um, format. Like, they're not really like yeah. anything else. They're not like YouTube videos. They're not like feature films. They're kind of almost a halfway between the two. Mm. I'm going to... I'm going to just jump on to Ellie because it'll have, it'll have links to these short films I watch, and I'd highly recommend every single one. Um, I found these two short films. One's called Inside Out, but I can't actually find a link to the one I saw because it's a very popular title for a film, and it's not the Disney one, obviously. Not, not the Pixar. Um, the Pixar, sorry. Okay. Um, uh, and there's another one called The, the Gas Man. Mr. Gas Man, bring me a dream. <laughs> the Gas Man It's very difficult film. to sing through a gas mask, guys. That's, that's the important thing to remember. Yeah, so it's by Lynn Ramsey. Lynn Ramsey. Oh, okay. Yeah, who's she's she went on and did loads of huge stuff. Uh, yeah, and the other one's called Inside Out. It's really, really, really interesting. And uh, yeah, and we watch these in in reference to this this principle of desire. What is the desire in these films? Um, types of desire um, and and kind of the strength of uh, and weaknesses of the, depending on which kind of desire you use. And it's really cool. It's still early stages, but it's very interesting. Because certainly, when you're acting right, your desire, the thing, your objective in a particular scene is what drives you. Right, like that's what you're you lead with something like mm-hmm. you know so presumably as a, as a as a screenwriter you have to like have what every character desires in mind when you're writing the screenplay is that is that fair yeah but then also kind of identifying what form their desire their desire takes because that then determines the strength of the character and the strength of the plot because you could desire, you know, like um, oh, I need to. I really need to like reference the the textbook really. But they he like breaks down desire into three different forms. You have three different types of desire, right. um, like habitual desire, which might be something less uh, explicit. So, um, uh, a father coming home from uh, Tesco with bags of shopping to feed his kids. That is a form of desire, and that's a very um, stable form of desire yeah. because it's something very accessible and uh, and ever present. Um, but then you might also have um, uh, uh, a thief going over plans to steal a diamond, and that's kind of a more volatile kind of. You've got to kind of balance these forms. Yeah, it's I'm doing it an injustice, but this the book is fascinating. It's called um, the Essential Screen play i think it's well worth reading it's really interesting um by sam i I, honestly i'm very jealous i'd love to take a course on screenwriting because it's something that i would like to do in the future like to write a a screenplay for like for example a netflix series or for a feature film or like you know i feel like i feel like you're suckling from the teat of knowledge that i i covet well the 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 instinctive screenplay there you go the instinctive screenplay. Um, okay yeah it's 12 pounds 69 amazon prime it's very very interesting Okay. Um, and I've got another one called uh, John York's Into the Woods and Save the Cat, which are two other. Right, oh, really yeah. Ones. Save the Cat is a classic. It's like yeah. you make the hero save the cat, you make the villain imperil the cat. It's like mm-hmm. you, you character by action, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Uh, incidentally, at this point in the podcast, I am starting the mead that was sent by Danvi. It was given to me as part oh, of Lord. my um, graduation present. Um, did I, ever, did I ever describe to you this present that he gave me? The, the mead? Well, well, but, ah, well, 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 you say that. He, he didn't just give me the mead, Daniel, because he gave me a, a, um, a box that the mead came in, like a cylindrical mm-hmm. box, which he has printed out. Um, he's, he's got a custom printout on this, which has two things on it. It has a set of ancient Danish, so presumably Viking, runes, uh, which, according to him, spell out something like mead for uh, given to Simon for uh, completion of his doctorate or something like that. So mm-hmm. they look like dwarven runes from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And then a picture of me with um, graduating with my PhD on the side. That's so nice. So that is going to take, once I finish this mead, which might well be in this recording, um, that is going to take pride of place in the office somewhere. I need to find like a trophy rack or something. So Danvi... Mm. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this present. It's extraordinarily kind of you. Um, I shall cherish this. This. He is a lovely boy. I shall cherish this and your memory 
not that you're dead, but I will always think of you very fondly uh, forever because you're you're a top lad. Um, <laughs> speaking of, speaking of which, Dan, should we should we move on to Patreon corner? I think we might have to. Yeah. What a segue. <laughs> You know how, like, when you go to Indian takeaways and you have mango chutney, and it's like a very strong aftertaste in your mouth. Okay. Well, you, you, you can, can, like that's that's not that an unreasonable thing to say. I don't a reasonable and thing unreasonable a thing to say. I don't think. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dad, we'll take you home. Soon. Okay. Sure. Have you had your pills? But I, I don't think it's. I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's that's pretty fair like you know you have a poppadom with mango chutney and there's like a ooh that kind of aftertaste in your mouth yeah right <laughs> so uh, Simon and I have had a, had a quick we just touched base on uh, how this podcast actually works because it's been bloody ages I touched since his we've tenor. Had... oh god <laughs> um I say um oh the uh <laughs> I do declare, Mr. I Brown. I do declare. <laughs> um, As- uh, yeah, <laughs> how this how this podcast works. I do it's support the Confederates. <laughs> um, it's that time again where we have to say a massive thank. We don't have to, but we would like to. We, we choose to um, because we're nice people. Yeah, um, we'd like to say a massive thank you to our top lads. In fact, everyone who supports uh, the Patreon and supports the podcast by extension. Thank you very much. Um, but but specifically our top lads, these these lovely people give uh, five dollars a month to ensure that this podcast can pay for its hosting and its Wikipedia donations uh, to the Wikimedia Foundation. I also um, want to spend the money that we have in the bank. Like we have the Wikicast has built up quite an amount of money, and I feel like we should spend it on something stupid. Yeah, we should get a silly thing. Well, the thing is, I I also want to, for example, pay tapioca for doing our um, jingles for us. We've never... Like, yeah, that's true. I would like to commission a jingle and then pay him outrageously over the board for, like, yeah. retrospectively for all the things he's done for us. Absolutely. Um, he's but yeah, we, we, you know, you the, the people who support us on Patreon keep this podcast going. And we are... It's a beautiful cooperative, it is. isn't it? It is. I'm very, very yeah. aware and we're very, very grateful for it. Without further ado, then, I would very much like to say a massive thank you to Ben Dover... <laughs> well done moustache man uh, Ben McMurtry and Ben Dent I would like to thank Bryce D. Wilkins Choco Cat and Colm Mansfield Connor Levers the one the only Dan Hanvey and Davy Shrum Vontabel Elliot Conway Network Connectivity Problems hang on let me just refresh and refresh what are you going to do I'm just going to get some flesh from a, a poor Peruvian <laughs> orphan hang on oh, god um, and Eric Let me just Davis. Reflesh. Jesus. Henry Brewster, Isabel Ostrovsky, and Jay Wright. John Mannion, Jonathan Trimble, and Jordi Eschendahl. Kyle Much, Lachlan Woods, and Lewis Watson. Maggie, Marut, Vakira Punyawat, and Matt Maguire. Omar Miranda, Fee Gascoigne, and Rory Healy. Simon Torseth, Tapio, Tapio Kirkinen, Kirkinen, and Whitney Fairies. Thank you so much for bearing with us during quite a dry spell because we've just been so busy. Um, it's, yeah, it's been quite a busy couple of weeks, guys. So to, thank you for being patient with us whilst we haven't put out an episode and acquired the alcohol necessary for this episode. Indeed. Oh, boy. I feel like I'm quite a bit drunker than you, Dan. I feel like you need to catch up. I, I mean, I've, I've nearly finished all my gin. I also have class tomorrow. <laughs> I need to finish a video tomorrow. <laughs> what, an, what an American thing to say. Oh, God, I was a little bit sick in my own mouth when I said I've that. I've got class tomorrow. I have class. Tomorrow. I've got class tomorrow. I go I'm like to super the busy. Uh, Georgia uh, Institute of Technology and I study um, VR applications of sucking dick. Um, that's lovely. That's, that's how you sounded right then. <laughs> Is that a BA or a BSC? <laughs> <laughs> it's BS, the amount of work I have to do. <laughs> 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 Top lad. Ah, oh, we're f- on Spotify, boys. We're on Spotify. You did yeah. it, and it wasn't even yeah. that difficult. Yeah, f- sources. Oosh. On that note, um, Jay Wright has emailed in. So, which corner uh, are we in, Dan? Which which corner? I feel like we're. Oh yeah. 
Hi everyone, we're in Correspondence Corner. Um, <laughs> Jay Wright has emailed in uh, saying, uh, Wikicast on Spotify, which is what urged me to check. Um, he says, hi guys, I was listening to the latest podcast and as soon as Dan submitted the Wikicast on Spotify, I had to check. To my delight, it has been added. I can't believe how easy it was. This will make my reading experience far better than driving. The pod beam app can, can't be controlled by my car's um, entertainment system. It cannot be contained! Yeah. Um... But the Spotify app can. I'm sure you can now imagine uh, how happy and safe my driving will now be. Anyway, I want to wish the both of you and your families a very happy Christmas. Thank you, Jay. Sorry for the delay in that. Uh, I look forward to more great content into the new year. Best wishes, Jay, age 21, and I'm too drunk to work out the rest. Christ, um, like, I'm, I'm just looking at... We are on Spotify. Like, yeah. Our, I can hear my voice. If I, if I go on the last episode that we released, which was Christmas parentheses surname, like, yeah. I can hear... My voice on Spotify, Daniel. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Isn't that ridiculous? Um, we're on Spotify, everyone. That was that. We need to do a. I need to do something on the Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, please do. I I, I sometimes share memes on the Facebook page, but that's a. Yeah, I've seen that's, that. That's about it. Um, but uh, yeah, wow. We are Jay. We are on Spotify. Wow, I felt like I'm in best of the worst. Um, Madness. Next up, we have an email from uh, Riley Stray, which definitely sounds like a porn star name. Um, Riley writes. Uh, oh, I, can't, I came up with a really good porn star name the other day on my walk home from the cathedral. Oh, what's your porn star name? Penny Lick. <laughs> okay. Because you know what a penny lick is, right? Isn't it a sweet that only costs a penny? No, it was a type of thing. It's a small glass for serving ice cream that was banned. Really? In 19th century, yeah. A penny lick was a small glass for serving ice cream used in London, England, and elsewhere in the 19th century and early 20th century. Street vendors would sell the contents of the glass for a penny, um, but the customer would lick the glass clean and return it to the vendor who would reuse it. Ooh, oh, that's So nasty. it was banned because um, of the spread of disease, particularly uh, cholera, cholera and I tuberculosis. Was cholera. Yeah. So yeah. your, name, my, your name would be Penny Lick. Um, my name would be Manaconda. Okay. Because it's it's uh, because of my huge penis, Dan. Yeah, I like it. That's, That's it's, good. It's simple. It's to the point. Um, there we go. A, a penny lick and Manaconda. Write your Bish, fan bash, fictions bosh. now. <laughs> Um, speaking of which, um, I am delighted to to report that Riley Stray has written in an email that's the, a subject line: the nasal feudal system, and has attached an email. Da are you seeing this? Um, She's attached a picture. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's um, that is pretty terrifying. As, actually, isn't uh, it? as Jedi Master Ki Avimundi, with except for those of you who are not familiar with Ki with Star Wars lore, Ki Avimundi is the one with the very tall head. And they've taken Dan's hair and put Dan's hair on top of the head, but Dan's face is at the bottom of the head. So it's 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 quite something to behold. Um, it's nightmare fuel, I think it's safe to say. Yes, um, that's going straight on the uh, Wikipedia, the the Wikipedia, the um, the Facebook page. Instantly, we, we thank did, you. We did Riley. have a wikia. I don't know who updates it, but I feel like that should go on the wikia for you. That's your official Absolutely. profile picture right now. Um, Riley writes, first, happy new year and congratulations to Simon on the completion of the PhD. I did it, everyone. I, I, I actually put it in the f***ing ground. Um, it's done. I don't have to talk about it ever again, except I will to give me credibility in scientific arguments. Um, Riley then continues, obligatory long-time reader, first-time writer. I absolutely love the Wikicast. I've been following Simon's work for several months now, but it's wonderful getting to know Dan as well. See, Dan? Yay. People like you as well. You oh, two compliment really, each other reassuring. so well. Dan, I think you're a prick. And sometimes Thanks, I forget mate. I'm reading a podcast and not a silent member of a real-life conversation. Oh. Riley, when you wrote this, did you sort of possibly think that I might be very drunk whilst reading it? Because this is what people gave their money to charity for, so... You know, this is the this is the reality, okay? Just just bite steady, the steady go. Just bite the pillow and deal with it, okay? Um I've been binge reading for several weeks now, trying to get caught up, but it wasn't until today that I noticed I have a unique connection to the one and only Gary S. May from episode two of the Wikicast. What? No. Do you remember? <laughs> Riley, stop it. <clears throat> this can't be true. 
at the time of recording, he was a department head at Georgia Tech. However, he is now the chancellor of my university, the University of California, Davis. Good heavens. I couldn't believe my eyes. I wouldn't think that you two have heard of Davis, but it's in the same university system as the more famous UC Berkeley. I'm proud to brag that we have the world's top veterinary sciences program. Plug, 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 plug. Not f*** that. You have Gary S. May, famous on the Wikicast. Wow. That's inc- that's incredible. You need to tell him, yeah, that we featured him in a, in a serious podcast. He can listen to and then pursue legal action for defamation of character. <laughs> I can't remember what we said in that episode, but it can't have been good. But Riley, yeah, you've got to tell him. Um, um, Riley also, however, has a question. Um, sorry, whenever I hear the the name Riley, I always think of porn. Am I alone in this? Do you th- no? Like, yeah, I'm with you there. It's Riley Reed, right? Yeah. Like, one of the greatest porn stars of all time. Um, Like, I can't not... When I see the word Riley, can't not think of it. I'm sorry, Riley. I'm sorry. But I I, I think of porn when I see your name. It's it's unfortunate. Anyway. Oh, God, I'm going to regret this in the morning. You'd also chuck a, chuck a D in Riley. What have you got? Ryle D. Ridley. Oh! All, <laughs> all that, yeah. <laughs> Ryle, Ryle D. Well done. <laughs> Oh, oh God! <laughs> Rildy. I'm gonna Daisy re- Rildy. <laughs> <laughs> Jay-Z. Hold on. Jay- Daisy Rildy. It's when you've got her in an argument. She's like, "Oh, you fucking want some, mate?" Smashes blue milk container. Goes after you with a fucking <laughs> smashed up milk. Jesus bottle. Christ! <laughs> she'll shank you. Daisy Rildy. She'll she'll stab you, mate. She's been in the outer rim. Um, Lock the. <laughs> Lock the door and tighten my restraints. Oh Jesus God, Christ! Do you remember full, that? I, I'm at full mast, I, Dan. You don't I used to, to um, I used to mark my heart rate increase when I see did. that. We measured your heart yeah. rate. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, incredible stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, p- uh, porn star stray. Um, <laughs> I have a question. For several years now, I've been fostering a hobby in video production. I often find myself daydreaming about ideas for projects, but they never go anywhere. I had robust, thorough plans this autumn to do a large video project to document my experience studying abroad at the University of Nottingham. Organic chemistry, never again. I both lost interest and became too busy to work on it. I'm now trying during the holidays to salvage some of the footage and put together an abridged version. I feel disappointed in myself and devastated for not producing the final product I'd spent so many weeks and months dreaming about since April. That's, um, hang on, January, February, March, April. That's eight months away uh, ago. Heck. Um, I know, I know the months of the year. Um, uh, Jesus. Um, do you two have any advice for buckling down and seeing one's projects through to the end? Dan, what's your advice? Few and few, like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> this has Less been, than often. This has been the most chaotic, neutral episode we've ever done. This has if, been such a mess. If, 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 um, if time is an issue, um, then do it do little bits semi-regularly rather than feeling trying to feel as pressured about like oh, i just don't have enough time to start it don't feel like there, you, you, do you know what i mean little bits um do you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you just get on with it yeah just just even if even if you know you've got you can nab 15 minutes here even if you that's can at only least take getting you into only 10 percent of that dick you've just get, get just get on with it riley you know yeah get on it just oh oh i feel really i feel really weird knowing that like we've probably wanked the same person like Mm. isn't that a bit weird yeah Mm. that is weird not 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 a fan not not a fan of of imagining dad wanking yeah funnily enough Um, so your your advice to Riley Reed? It's not me wanking. No, it's Penny Lick. It's my um. Oh, sorry, Penny Lick is my my alter wanking. ego. Penny Lick wanks to Riley Reed. Dan Moore listens to Riley Stray, um, yeah. and gives the advice that you should just get on with it. Yeah, basically. Um, I mean, I feel like that's pretty fair advice that you should just like, just, just, just like honestly look at yourself and be like, just 
fucking do it. You know, like I have so many projects on my, I have a whiteboard in my, my room that I have for like future video projects and for like things I'm going to do this week. And the number of times I just have to look at things and be like, just Simon, just fucking do it. Like get over your fear of talking to people on the phone and actually call that restaurant and reserve a, val a like a, a, a restaurant date for Valentine's Day. Like, you know, you're going to hate it, but just fucking get on with it. Um, mm -hmm. Or I don't know, like paint those Tyranid warriors, finish that book or like whatever it is, just like the number of times I have to tell myself, just like, just, just do it, you know? Um, I feel like that's the single biggest piece of advice that I can offer as well is just like, look at yourself objectively and be like, why, why have you not done this yet? What's holding you back? Mm. Um, Admittedly, this is this is coming through the lens of several several um, like units of mead and wine consumption. Um, yeah, I'm starting to hit. I think I'm reaching the point now where I've I've actually felt my head nod. I'm just I'm doing a I'm doing a Michael Graham. Oh no, the, uh, yeah. the buckaroo of the drunk. Incidentally, world. Riley, uh, you said experience studying abroad at the University of Nottingham. Uh, I was born in Nottingham. I never knew that. Yeah. I'm actually um I'm actually a filthy northerner. You're northern. Yeah. Oh, I had no That's idea. Shocking. Yeah, it's on my passport and everything. So, where, why were your was that from work for your dad or something? Well, my dad my my dad's from Yorkshire. Mum's from Mum's from Lincolnshire, and they were living in, I think Newark at the time. Right. Not the New and York then, airport, but the place. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, then yeah, then I was born in Nottingham, and then we moved. Basic, we moved south basically when I was like one, I think. You do have an accent that has transitioned from when I first met you, almost completely Australian, to yeah, yeah. like about fifty percent Aussie, fifty percent Northern, which is a really weird mix. It is odd, yeah. It's like good day, I'm gonna stab you. Um, is basically. I'm sorry. It's basically a <laughs> Sorry. No. 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 We're not. We're not. We're not just breezing over that. We are not breezing over that. <laughs> that was a rare insight into your f***ed up mind when you're bev. Because for, for some reason there was a there was a stream of thought there. But what we heard as the, for myself and the readers, you know, because it's like good day, I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> Jesus, wow. That's, what, that's, this, that's this, Australia meets the North, right? This should be illegal. <laughs> this should be illegal. Oh, dear. I, I'm going to have such a fun time editing this episode completely sober. Yeah. It's also going to be the longest, I think, the longest clip of audio I've ever sent you. It's over two hours long, Daniel. Oh. Jesus. Oh, God. Right, hang on. Let's get back to Riley Reed. Riley Reed has written in and finishes their, their email by saying, sorry for the long email. Team dog, but cats are Wait. great. Thank you. Also, please see the attached image. Might take us Dan on Dan as a Jedi. Ki Adi Mondi. Oh, Ki Adi Mondi. Love it. Nice. Thank you, Riley Reed, for all the times you've given me in the past and for this email. Um... Outstanding, Thank you, Riley. Thank you. Fucking get on with it, Riley. Just do it. Do it. Right. Yeah, it's too long. I'm afraid I can't read that. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, we're gonna read this, Dan. Okay. Hello. Right. Henlo. Hello, Mr. Spongy. And Mrs. And Electric. Mrs. Electric. I remember, do you remember cum spong? I remember cum spong very well. It was our it was our yeah. password for something, yeah. wasn't it? It was. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> we had <laughs> we've changed it. We've changed it since, but cum spong was our password. <laughs> for, quite, for quite a while. What is wrong with us? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we changed I changed the Wi-Fi name over the Christmas period, by the way. Oh, uh, what's it called now? It was. Uh, well, it still is. Ding dong, merrily Wi-Fi. <laughs> Which is quite good, I think. Our new one, our one at home, as in Pixel Girl and I's one at home, is Behold the Lamb of God. Still, yeah. So we're carrying yes. on that tradition. I need to change it back to Behold the Lamb of God. Oh wow! Right, we've got an email here from Mo Momo Koo. Momo Koo. Um, Henlo, Mister Spongy and Mrs. Electric. 
I am a reader, and not a good one, so I was just catching up on the podcasts, and I was sitting on the bus heading back from a trip to a shopping centre. SHOPPING CENTRE, ALL CAPS! Moles can get the f*** out. <laughs> but one of the points discussed resonated with me, resonated so hard that here I am writing a badly written email on my bed with the sentence structure of a toddler. It, ha- it hit your resonant frequency. Incidentally, Danvi, yeah. I, like, I would like you to know that at that very moment, about three seconds before I started talking, I finished the last of your Viking blood. I am I am oh, going to be running on fumes for the rest of this podcast. R- running on very alcoholic fumes. Best kind of fumes. The point that resonated oh. me was when the fellow reader wrote in to describe three chronic migraine situations. There. Three. I can't read. <laughs> there. Chronic my- migraine situation. <laughs> We're reaching a point where I'm seeing words and I'm just changing them. Um, ah, that went too hard. We'll just change that to... It was like... That's, three. That's a classic Simpsons joke. It's like... um. There's been a, a fatal tidal wave in Kuala Lumpur, uh, Paris. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I'm not writing it. I'm not writing in to teabag and say, suck it. I have no pain. Ha 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 ha. Right. I would welcome a teabagging so I... from the Wikicast fandom, just saying. So I think I should move on to what I'm actually supposed to be talking about. Way back when in, way back when in the September-ish of 2015, I was stuck with a massive headache. Uh, I was struck with a massive headache. At first I was like, oh, this shouldn't be so bad. I'll just go and take some painkillers and it'll all be over with, right? Right? It was brain what? cancer. It was brain cancer. Oh, gosh. Oh, I really hope it was brain t- cancer. <laughs> As you could probably tell, it was brain cancer. No, it didn't work. <laughs> so I kept up the I kept upping the painkillers until I reached my max. The max I should stuff in my face hole. And I kept that for about a month. <laughs> Then mystically the pain disappeared and everything was hunky dory until it came back with a vengeance. It came back. <laughs> brain cancer too. This time it's personal. <laughs> on ice, the musical. <laughs> brain cancer it... on ice. <laughs> um, <laughs> this summer. <laughs> um, it uh, it started to droop my knees. Oh, no, so, I'm on. sorry, what? It struck with an iron fist after pulling me into a false sense of security, whisking me off my feet, and not just a headache. Oh, no, no, no. My face started to droop. My knees were weak, arms heavy, mum mum made spaghetti. spaghetti. (laughs) About 20 minutes later, I found myself in holding my head in pain, and my left or right side felt weak, dizzy, and everything spinning. Sitting in A&E, about seven hours later, I was hospitalised, slowly getting better, head still pounding. Three days later, MRI done. MRI done, I was released... With not a clue as to what caused it, released. Chronic and cranky, luckily enough for me, that year I didn't need to do anything important uh, and moved back into normal life until it happened again. I was struck with the same damn hospital bed, only worse. Barely walking, barely talking. Oh, please tell me this isn't brain cancer. I'm going to feel terrible if this is actually brain cancer. (laughs) So then I decided to take this a bit more seriously. A couple of weeks later, I was seeing a specialist uh, trailing drugs to see what helps doing different tests Tra- trailing and drugs. just dub- as in when you walked you left drugs behind or were they trying yeah. drugs i think were they we've got trailing here um doing wherever they walk they just, just left drugs behind them. that was cocaine yeah, it's like, um, it was mdma on the street <laughs> it's like it's like the Hans- hansel and gretel in the hood um <laughs> Uh, That's the crackle in the hood. It's, there's there's a gingerbread house, but it's coke on the outside. Yeah, incredible. Inc- um, until it happened again, I was back in the same damn hospital. I know, yeah, and just double and triple checking that it's enough that will imme- that will immediately kill me. All we knew was that it wasn't a stroke, nor a brain tumour, nor some kind of brain infection. It's Side not notes, a tumour. Spinal taps hurt as all heck, especially when they stab you multiple times to get your sweet to get to your sweet, sweet brain juice. <laughs> but what was it? We will never know. I got used to the pain in a couple of months, but I too was chronic and cranky. I was discharged from outpatients of the two different hospitals I was going to with inconclusive results. Sure, I was in pain, but I was happy. I was coping with school well, and I sure and sure I was cra- and sure I was cranky. But all teens are, are so. But all teens are so. What's the harm? The following year, I did my... Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> I love. I really love it when we get emails in, but this is like... I'm sorry, this Dan. Really this hard. person has had massive brain problems. We've got to cut them some slack. Okay. 
Sure, I was in pain, but I was happy. I was coping with school well, and sure, I was cranky. But all teens are, so what's the harm? The following year, I did my GCSEs. I passed out. I passed most of them. I passed out. I passed out. <laughs> I, passed out. I wake up. I, I missed. Up. I missed. <laughs> <laughs> I fired again. But I didn't hit what I... And I missed. <laughs> I hit something. I hit a But popsicle. it wasn't what I was aiming for. So I guess I missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got an eight in maths, equivalent to A-star damn number grades, use, uselessly confusion. Nice. <laughs> Useless, yeah. Uselessly confusion. Uselessly. I am uselessly confusion. Also, I should have got a nine, but technicalities. Uh, that September, I entered my school sixth form, and sure, the A-level shift was hard, but I was coping the first t- year flew by. Flash forward to November 2018, on the day of an internal school mock, sitting in class, a headache I used to got really bad, and within half an hour I lost complete control of my left side. I couldn't speak, and everything spinning like I was in a tornado being oh, spun it's around. it's a brain tumour, it's brain cancer, I was wheeled, isn't it? I was wheeled out of class and into an A&E once more, hospitalised for a week this time, and came out barely walking, massively, extremely painful headache again, unlike anything I've ever felt. And the cherry on top was um, it, it was that it wasn't getting as far, wasn't getting as better as fast as it used to. And it was getting to me. Plus, the same thing happened the week I went back into school, but this time I stayed home and I slowly got better there. I got back to, I got back into school early December, and slowly I've been getting better, but not at a good rate and not a sufficient rate. You see, the problem was this is my final year. I should be, I should in April be doing my three A levels, and I should have university offers done, or I should be sending them off in the next few days. As you can probably guess by my tone, that won't be happening. Uh, whatever this has had an effect on my fine motor skills here is the longest this is the longest I've typed with both hands in months oh god um, oh almost, no and we've not been yeah. paying attention <laughs> oh, it's, oh fuck. god we're such <laughs> shit oh f- oh f- <laughs> <laughs> we f- it down. we've had a really heartfelt email someone's yeah, had a massive just... brain injury and we've been like oh you can't type properly oh f- it's um this is the longest I've typed with both hands in months. It's almost like I've forgotten how to do stuff. I can walk now, much better than before, but really well. <laughs> no, I've still got the massive headache and I can still feel it holding me back. I feel For singularly example, mentally incapable of responding to this in an appropriate, yeah. in an appropriate this, uh, the, way. For example, this email took way too long to write because my left hand keeps cramping for some reason, I don't know. Oh. I've decided along with my school to continue with my subjects, sit one A level this year and sit the other two next year. Hopefully this will work. So long as progress is being made at this current rate, all should be golden, good golden happy dancing rainbows and all the lucky charms, etc. Oh God, I feel terrible, Dan. We've we've decided to go through one of the most serious emails we've ever received. Someone's had massive brain problems, and we've decided to go through it whilst we're both steaming drunk. You're sincerely gonna troll you, or any other spelling variation of this. What? They were trolling us the entire time. I don't know. Well, hang on, there's a TLDR. What's the TLDR that they provided? I heard a reader write in to let you guys know as to what's going on with them, and I've decided to let you know there are two of us. Uh, what it is with you guys collecting people and chronic migraines and why your voices are somehow helping. If there's another person who comes forward, I'm going to need you to get... I'm going to need you guys to get tested or something. No, so I don't think they're trolling. Um, oh, God. So basically, by us reading out their email... but Sorry, I should say by you reading out their email, we have hopefully helped? I hope. Oh, God, I, I mean, certainly... I gonna hope. troll you. Good luck. It sounds like, you know... Do send in a follow-up with, the, like, where you're at yeah, at the moment. Yeah, please do. Uh, because we do want to know, much as I am in not a fit state to really make any executive decisions, I do want to hear from you and where you're at at the moment. Um, because... I, we care about you're all you're, the readership is our is the wiki cast we are our children you know and we we yeah. look out for our children okay we do so let us know how you're getting on okay uh gonna troll you um also they did you see what they followed this up with no uh they said also hashtag team cat sent from my ipad oh really so jeez mwah Mwah! Thank you. Uh, thank you, gonna troll you. That's. I, I don't care if you're trolling. That's a support for Team Cat, is a support that I will take at this very instant Absolutely. time. Well, ha- happy. Uh, happy Festag. Happy, happy Festag. Happy New Year. Holy heck. Hecking Ruddy George, I hope you get better Hecking soon. Hecking Ruddy George, yeah. Me too. Oh, this has been a fucking mess. This is like um, boozy bowling. Oh, don't even remind me. That was such a nightmare to edit.
So Dan, what what have we learned today? Oh fuck. I don't have the Wikipedia article. <laughs> oh no! Um, I think I closed. I ta- like alt tab. It, it was Lith- Lithuania in the 2010 yeah, Summer I got it, Olympics. I got, I got it. No Youth Olympics. Lithuania at the 2010 Summer Youth Olympics. Yes. We know that they did. They got four medals: three golds, one bronze. Yes, well done, Lithuania. Representatives for basketball, swimmers, boxers, modern pentathlon, judo athletes, gymnast, rowers, canoers, sailors. Um, we then we found the song. The theme song. I still haven't. Song, I still haven't the... heard it. You know what? Let's let, no. let's include a second of that song right now in the edit. Good luck, future Simon. Generation. That wasn't that lovely. I really enjoyed what that second. Treat. I really like it. Yeah, it was great. It had mm-hmm. Sean Kingston, who hasn't done anything since he's been in a speed boating accident. <laughs> Jesus. We did this because you donated to charity. That's why you did this to us. Okay, so thank you very yeah. much for your donations to charity. Thank you. Oh. And hopefully this year is going to be filled with happiness and joy for everybody. And the Wikicast will get up to some even more mad, mad antics. We're in our second season, oh. officially. Oh, God, we are. Um, so we'll need to do like new merch at some point. Incidentally, we did have an email from a couple of people asking about merch. Uh, I'm sure we're going to do some more down the line. That's going to be your um, job. That's the uh, John Rutter Memorial School for Injured yes, Swans yeah. shirt. It will happen. It will happen. Um, I will see it's it. Just a... I will make sure it yeah. happens. I'll keep pestering Dan until it happens. Make it so. Make it so. Tea. Yeah. Oh, great. Hot. Data. Data. Part on my face. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> That's all for this week's episode. Perfect. Don't forget to subscribe to us, the new podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. Uh... Uh... Sonia! Sonia! <laughs> And other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> oh, f*** me. <laughs> We're on Spotify. We are official podcasters. <laughs> this, this, this is, I mean... Oh, oh God. Dan v, I Happy blame New you. Year, everyone. Dan v, I blame you for providing me with this... <laughs> Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole. Three... To and we'll see you next time. And we'll see you next time. And we'll see you next time. Fuck.